welcome uh, the uh, viewers and uh, uh, those who are, would like to, uh, to follow us on this series of uh, testimonials and uh, healing. Uh, here uh, in this series, uh, we have very many um, things to educate us and uh, some of the experiences that we have gone through with the people having various uh, complicated diseases. Yes, yeah, so I'll be trying to educate us on, on uh, some of the diseases that, uh, uh, that are affecting, affecting the people in these last days. And uh, what we need to know is that God is in control. Let us pray as we get into this presentation. Father in heaven, we thank you because your love is, uh, is so much for us. We thank you because you've given us this platform and this day that we may be able to go through what you've provided for us as the healing mechanisms. So let your presence be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, to all viewers, uh, my name is Wickley for Mondi and um, a medical missionary evangelist or Bible health educator. I tend to educate people more on Bible health and hygiene principles that God has given in his, uh, in his book. So we find that in these last days, many people are, are uh, sickling. And uh, we see that uh, uh, day by day, there are many uh, diseases that are difficult to treat. We can uh, call them the diseases of the Egyptians. So this is my preamble before we go to, uh, before we go into this uh, study. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, God is promising the children of Israel some blessings and some curses. And uh, you see that in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this book of Deuteronomy, God is saying that uh, in chapter number 28 and verses 20, uh, 20 uh, 20, it says, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine, thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. But the moment the people of the Lord or any human being who forsakes the Lord, uh, not following his word, his principles, uh, they are bound to be uh, to face certain difficulties. The very Bible says that my people are, are uh, destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So you see, we have diseases today that has been there even from the, uh, the very uh, early days of the world history. In verses 22, we get the first disease to be mentioned. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee unto until thou perish. So we see a disease there that many people are having today. That is uh, TB tuberculosis, TB rheumatic fever, we have inflammatory diseases like arthritis, uh, uh, diseases like cardio, uh, uh, cardiodiasis and uh, uh, cystitis, many diseases that are caused as a result of inflammations. If you go to verses 27, it says, uh, the Lord will smite thee with the watch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereby, wherefore thou canst not be healed. So we have the botch, these are boils, 
the emeralds are hemorrhoids, the scab, the diseases of the skin, eczema, psoriasis. The itch, we have the, fun, uh, the, the, the can, candida and all other diseases that are manifested by itch. You know that diabetes, one of the signs of diabetes is itch, itchiness of the body. And uh, verses 29 says, and thou shalt grow at noonday as the blind groweth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. So you find uh, because of uh, the condition of the world, the way people eat and drink and do many things, many have, have uh, actually found or contacted diseases that have caused them to even become blind. Now you go to verses number 35, the Lord shall smite the knees. Is a problem with the knee, arthritis, and in the legs. Uh, in the legs, we have certain wounds that we are going to discuss in our class today with a sore botch uh, that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head the body is going to be sick. So this sickness, these diseases were there in the time of the Egyptians and even the time of the Israelites. Look at verses 45. Mm, sorry, verses number 51, 61, sorry. Uh, it says, also every sickness, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So we see a disease, uh, uh, every plague, uh, there are many diseases uh, that are talked of here. We have mentioned some, verses 65 says, and among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Those were the diseases of the Israelites that the Bible says in Exodus chapter 15, verses 26, that if thou diligently hearken unto my voice and keep my statutes and my commandment, therefore shall I not put the diseases of the Egyptians. Uh, and for I am the Lord that uh, healeth all your diseases. So we must know that God is the one who heals all diseases. And for him to heal all our diseases, we must diligently hearken unto his voice and his statutes. The only principles that can make us to, uh, to, to get health or get healed from any disease is following the principles of health, proper diet, a vegetarian diet that we get in the book of Genesis, chapter one, 20, uh, verse, chapter one verses 29, chapter three, verses 18. Uh, that is the food that the body needs, plant-based diet. And then exercise, regular exercise is needed. We see God putting man in the garden of Eden and, uh, and uh, making him to till. Uh, and dress this, uh, the, 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 the garden. It means it was to exercise. And uh, uh, we see in day, uh, in, uh, in the beginning, we see the world was filled with water. So water, drinking a lot of uh, soft and uh, plenty of water helps our body to restore and regenerate itself. Sunshine is very important for our body. God created the sunlight in day four. And then we have uh, rest, proper rest. We must be able to sleep eight, uh, seven to nine hours for adults uh, and uh, spending more time uh, in uh, sleeping in a dark room. You should not sleep in a room that is uh, having lights on. And then uh, we also see uh, proper, uh, uh, proper breathing in a plenty of fresh air, and then trusting in divine power and discarding all things that uh, harm our bodies and use uh, moderately that which is good for our bodies. 
So with that uh, knowledge or understanding those principles, um, we can now go to the uh, to our class today, our study today about diabetes. Now, diabetes is uh, one of the diseases that uh, uh, most of the times uh, you meet patients that are having this uh, disease. There are uh, about uh, three types of diabetes. So the origin of this disease as is known so far can be traced back to derangement of the function of the pancreas gland. Uh, so when you're going to look at the diabetic problem, the main focus is in the pancreas. Wherever the pancreas is having a problem, we can develop diabetes. So we must understand that everything we are going to do is aimed at restoring the pancreas. Uh, if we don't restore the pancreas, then the high and the low blood sugars are just a symptom, but not the true cause or where the problem is. So our main focus is in the pancreas gland. So contributing factors, however, are undoubtedly severe nervous disturbances or improper function of stomach, liver, and bowels. Uh, because you know the pancreas is one of the accessory uh, organs to the gut, the GIT, your gastrointestinal tract. So once uh, uh, your gut is not producing the right HCL, the right uh, uh, juices and the enzymes, this can trigger down to affect even your pancreas gland. Yeah, so uh, we are going to look at how we can uh, structurally restore these organs uh, so that uh, at the end, the liver can be, cannot be impaired. Now, uh, we have uh, three types of, of diabetes. And I'm going to, uh, to tell us how we can diagnose the diabetes type two. The patient will feel tired and weak and uh, usually complains about the pains in the limbs, uh, feeling depressed and downhearted, um, feeling depressed and downhearted, abnormal, abnormal thirst is often experienced, dizziness and headaches are common. The skin is dry and often itchy. The digestion is often upset due to the unusually abnormal increased appetite. The eyesight may be impaired or weak. The urine is generally very pale and plentiful. Sugar is present in the urine in more or less quantities. So something you're going to, uh, to find here is that uh, those signs uh, are some signs that affect the blood vessels. More so if you begin feeling uh, uh, fatigue, uh, feeling tired most of the times, urinating most of the times, uh, there is high blood sugars in your diet, in, in your blood. And high blood sugars causes what is called cell death. Your cells will be, uh, at a, will be destroyed at a higher percentage. And you see that when the sugar levels are so high, someone will be experiencing headaches because a lot of the brain cells are being destroyed. So, uh, that uh, uh, cell death uh, should be actually lowered or actually uh, stopped by balancing the, the pH of the, of the blood as well as normalizing the blood sugars and the blood pressures. And uh, when one is urinating constantly, it means that even the kidneys are affected. That's why when someone is on uh, glucophage or uh, insulin injections, you will find that at some times the person will have kidney failure 
And then finally, the person may have a problem with the liver. And then the end of it is, is death. Uh, we are going to see all these interrelationships in, uh, in our studies uh, based on uh, the experience that we have been having. Just a minute, I want to set my slide. Okay, we can continue. Uh, as we can see here, the types of diabetes, um, so the types of diabetes that we have is diabetes type one, which is also known as juvenile diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes. Uh, it is a chronic condition in which the pancreas produces little or no insulin. So insulin is a determinant hormone here that affects the blood sugars. Uh, when the blood sugars are high, it means the insulin is not getting into the blood. And sometimes the, when the blood sugars are very low and uh, uh, they cannot get high, it means that your glucagon levels are very low. So insulin and glucagon are determinant factors on blood sugars. Uh, insulin is a hormone needed to allow sugar to enter cells to produce energy. And different factors, including genetics and some viruses may contribute to type one diabetes. Although type one diabetes usually appears during childhood or adolescence, it can develop in adults. So some children are born with, maybe the pancreas is not well developed. So uh, it cannot produce insulin. So when, they, when you take uh, foods that are high in sugar, the sugar will be circulating in the blood and no insulin to control it. And most of the time, the children who get this disease can be genetic related or you find sometimes mothers give their, their children uh, a lot of sugary sweet foods. Uh, uh, foods that are sweetened with aspartam, uh, quinchas, juices, and uh, a lot of uh, highly processed foods. Sometimes we give children milk and no cow's milk as the, uh, the R bovine, which actually uh, affects the insulin. It, uh, it affects the pancreas. It tricks the pancreas in a way that the body will feel that there is insulin uh, enough to control the blood sugar. But uh, in real sense, uh, this is just an uh, uh, insulin that has been, uh, uh, has been uh, brought into the system, artificial insulin, I, as I may say so. So your pancreas will go on uh, we, we, we will stop producing insulin. And then the beta cells uh, are not actually activated. So when children sometimes are given milk at early stage, cow's milk, they will, may or may not, uh, sometimes experience diabetes type one. Another thing is when they take a lot of the sugary foods, uh, it will affect the pancreas it will overweigh the pancreas to an extent that the pancreas will not be able to, to produce uh, the, the insulin required. Now, another thing is uh, uh, in type one diabetes, the signs are increased thirst, frequent urination, bedwetting in children, extreme hunger, unintended weight loss, irritability, and other mood changes fatigue and weakness and blood vision. Um, because the blood vision is there because it affects the optic now. The sugar will end up uh, destroying the, the optic now. And so someone may experience the blood vision. Now, you have the type two diabetes. 
uh, which is more common in adults and accounts for around 90% of all diabetes cases. When you have type 2 diabetes, your body does not make a good use of the insulin that it produces. Uh, and the cornerstone of type 2 diabetes treatment is healthy lifestyle, including increased physical activity and health, healthy diet. Now with type 2 diabetes, why is the insulin uh, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, injected or uh, uh, assimilated into the blood? It is because the insulin receptors are blocked with high cholesterol. Now, diabetes, uh, the precursor to diabetes is high cholesterol. Um, so the, uh, the LDL, because they block the insulin receptors, so the insulin cannot get into the bloodstream. So the person must check the, uh, the cholesterol levels. Mostly you will find the person must have hypertension at first. The person is giving, given uh, SCE or uh, the, uh, the uh, hypertensives. Some hypertensives block the, uh, reduces the, the, the sugar levels in the body, which may end up affecting your pancreas. Some of them increases the diuretic, uh, the urasis process so that you urinate constantly and that may end up affecting your kidney. So uh, it, it always begins with hypertension, which is a result of high cholesterol in the system. And then you are given those drugs. Later on, you develop diabetes. Uh, it may continue. You develop kidney problem, kidney failure, and then you develop a problem with your heart or liver. Then we have the gestational diabetes. Uh, this diabetes uh, is a type of diabetes that consists of high blood sugar during pregnancy and is associated with complications to both mother and child. So uh, that is why most of the times uh, women, when they are uh, expecting, they are not required to take high sugar, uh, high sugar diet. More so if they take those high sugar diets, but they don't exercise, drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. their pancreases, uh, their pancreas may be affected. So what you need to do, uh, the gestational diabetes uh, can be avoided by balancing the foods, taking high vegetables, a high vegetarian diet with high, which is high in vegetables and high in fruits and reducing the, the, uh, the processed or uh, beverages that are having a lot of aspartam. Generally, uh, natural foods, uh, when they are taken in a natural, in a moderate way, they are able to balance, the, the sugar levels are able to balance easily because the body will take that which is uh, enough and the excess ones can be eliminated through the, uh, through the, uh, the kidney or even when you go for a, a long call. Now, this is the blood glucose chart. In the blood glucose chart, we have uh, the, the normal levels and uh, the levels that are uh, normal. So before meal, uh, it should be reading be between, uh, we have four to six, and this also depends with the age. Uh, for children around uh, from, age, uh, from age 12 to, to around 28 years of age, the blood sugars, when they are oscillating at this level, they are always, are uh, always, normal for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for the youth. But uh, for uh, an adult or uh, not an adult, aged people, when their blood sugar go be below five, they are in danger of uh, 
having or experiencing hypoglycemia, that is low blood sugar, which is so dangerous, it can kill any time. So this is the chart that can help us to know the, the normal ranges that we need to, to keep and uh, the ranges that are so dangerous that we need to uh, avoid. So make sure that you are, uh, you are at, the, at the normal levels every, every time. Now, the next thing I'm going to discuss is, uh, now if someone is having diabetes, either uh, this mostly type two diabetes, uh, in the treatment procedures, there are many or key things that you need to look at because uh, if you want to have a success, you must look at the foods that you are taking. You must look at the food that you are taking uh, because our key issue here is making sure that the blood sugars are maintained at normal. So we are going to look at the foods that when we take, they make the blood sugars to be high. Or when we take it, when you take them, the blood sugars are, are lowered. Uh, so you must study that carefully. So if you want to achieve results as quickly as possible. There is a question that uh, I was taking through this lifestyle program and within eight days, eight to 10 days, the blood sugars came from around 28 units and uh, it was oscillating between eight and nine for about eight days. So there are some specific treatment procedures that you have to follow for you to succeed. And uh, uh, after 10 days uh, with diabetes, uh, this is what I've experienced. You can program yourself to have a regimen that runs for 10 days. The 10 days is to lower the blood sugars to the normals, to the, uh, to the right, uh, the right uh, levels. And then you go again, the next 10 days is to strengthen the treatment to make sure that everything is stabilizing. And then uh, after about 21 days, the pancreas should actually be restored if you are thorough enough and you give the right food. So you, if you, as you look at this table here, uh, the starch and carbohydrates, they increase. Uh, we have those that increase blood sugars. Uh, if you take potatoes, they increase blood sugars by, uh, uh, by 10 or if you are using the scale um, uh, of one, it is by one unit, uh, but let's just take it uh, uh, by five, 10, 15, 20, those are the scale I'm using of one to five. So if potatoes increases by 10 units, rice, all kinds, whether brown or uh, or, uh, or white, 15 units, the bread, yams, cornmeal, grains, as you can see on the screen, they increases the blood sugars. And then millet and sorghum and buckwheat, they lower the blood sugars. So uh, if you have categories of food to give a diabetic uh, patient, you must choose on those that are uh, that are going to help you lower. And uh, I'm going to actually bring some caution here. Uh, you know, some of the times you can be, your mind can be tied to lowering this blood sugar until it gets so low that uh, the patient may, uh, uh, may go to, uh, to, uh, on a coma. So you don't want to, to do that. I'm going to tell us when we are supposed to now moderate putting some of the increasing foods that increase and food that, that lower so that uh, the person is, uh, does not uh, actually uh, become so weak that, they, that he or she may die. So the next list is on fats and oils. 
you know that uh, sugar fats are are stored um fats are just sugars that are stored in the form of glycerols oils are actually very sweet sugars than even the normal processed sugars that we have so for instance, if you have tested glycerin, glycerin, vegetable glycerin is very, very sweet, sweeter than even honey for those who have tested it. So if you take the food that are high in fats, your blood sugars are going to be in, to increase because the glycerols um, will be very high and uh, they will affect your blood sugars. So you must look, you must check on the fats and oils. You limit them uh, by maybe taking one unit in a day. And uh, when uh, you're taking the, the fats and the oils, you need to choose the right oils or the right fats to use. For instance, you see nuts and seeds are very good, but they increase the blood sugars by 10 units. So uh, in your diet, you must know how to place them. In the diet of a diabetic, you must know how to, to actually, the plates of a diabetic patient must be balanced, but you must make sure that you have the higher percentage of the food that are there in the plate lowers the blood sugars. Uh, at the, the the, 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 the less percentage, the least percentage should be the ones that increase the blood sugars. Let us just go through these tables and then I'll give a, an example of what I've used to, to help uh, the patients. Now, these are vegetables and fruits. Uh, you can see the increasing or decreasing units and the type of vegetables. And uh, most of the times you find that the vegetables that we take uh, help us in lowering the blood sugars. Generally, all the vegetables, it is because of the fiber content. The fiber that is in the vegetables help to bind the cholesterol within the, the, within the, the gut so that at the end of the elimination process, if you go for a long call, it had bind, uh, bounded a lot of cholesterol. And so that reduction of the cholesterol makes your insulin receptors to be able to, to take a lot of, uh, uh, to be open so that they can, the insulin can be uh, uh, stimulated into the blood to reduce the blood sugars. So you see, the cruciferous family, if you take broccoli, cauliflower, uh, they reduce it by 20 units. The greens by 20 units, vegetables, juice by 20 units, vegetable soup, reduce it by 20 units. And then string beans, reduce it or lowers the blood sugar. Twenty units. Uh, if you go to the fruit juices, the fruit juices will increase your blood sugar because the fruits have fructose, and they help in they, they increase the blood the blood sugars. So you must be very keen. Uh, you must be very keen when you're using the the fruit juices. You must know which fruits to use and which fruits to avoid. And then we have the lifestyle practices that help us to reduce or lower the blood sugars. Like if someone is uh, exercising or uh, if someone is not walking after the meal, you drink, you eat and drink, and then you just sit there, your blood sugar will, will increase by two units or 20 units. If you're drinking with meals, it adds by uh, 0 0.5 units or five points. 
Eating between meals increases it by five units. No bowel movement. If your bowels cannot move, you are sure of increasing your blood sugars because there is no elimination going, uh, going on. It means that the cholesterol levels are not eliminated. So you are at danger of uh, having a problem with high blood sugars. And uh, basically you should be going for a bowel movement for every meal you take. Generally in a day, you should be, if you're taking two meals, um, a normal person should be going to the loo for a long call around uh, three or four times in a day if you are taking, um, uh, if you are taking two meals. Uh, if you want to know that your bowels are moving well, immediately you wake up in the morning, you feel the urge to go for a, uh, for a, a long call. And then if you drink water, you feel like your body, your bowels are triggered to go for another bowel movement, uh, bowel uh, expression process. And then after you've eaten, you will always feel the eye. So you can go for, uh, you should be actually uh, feeling the urge to go for a bowel movement for any meal you take. If you're not going, if you're going once a day and you take three meals a day, then you are in danger. A diabetic patient must actually be put, put in, a, in a mode of removing the, uh, the waste through the long call, uh, short call. All the elimination channels must be open so that the the toxins are removed. Uh, eating late at night will increase your blood sugars. Exercise will, uh, will lower it by 30 units. Drinking lots of water by five units. Not drinking water will increase it by, uh, by 10 units. Walking after meals increase, uh, reduces it by 20 units. And if you sleep less, than six hours, your, uh, your blood sugars will be increased by five units. They, all these have correlation with, the, uh, with our pancreas because you know pancreas is a glandular structure or organ. And uh, if it is affected, other organs that are glandular, the adrenal glands, the pituitary gland, uh, may also be affected. So you want to make sure that you sleep enough about uh, eight to nine hours. Uh, you should have good sleep so that your, the serotonin levels may help to restore your, your glands. Um, so before I go to, to, to the hub that help with the, with the diabetes, I was talking about the recipe or the plate of a diabetic, uh, diabetic patient. It should be uh, well balanced. For example, what I've always used, if I have a, a diabetic patient who is, whose blood sugars is above, uh, above 30 or 300, we have different uh, glucometers uh, that some are using uh, uh, scale of one to, to 30. There are those that uses a uh, uh, scale of one to, to 10. So you must know which one you're using. So uh, if I find someone whose blood sugars are 28, oh no, not 28, uh, more, than, more than 300 or more than 30, you have to put him on a on a diet that is completely uh, a, a complete diet that is going to lower that blood sugar in day one and day two and day three. Normally, you will put him on fully raw diet, raw vegetables, and selected fruits that are that do not bring high sugars. Uh, do not increase or elevate the, the blood sugars. So for example, I may choose, I always choose the broccoli, the cauliflower, 
and uh, the local vegetable, indigenous vegetables like uh, uh, spider plant, uh, like uh, um, another amaranth, okra, jute mallow, for those who are able to get them. And once I have selected the right vegetables, um, what you will do is uh, you make sure that uh, the patient take that salad and then after taking that salad, it may be steamed or, or maybe uh, juiced so that uh, the body is able to, uh, uh, to assimilate it very fast. That will be in the morning. If I choose to, to give him some heavy, slightly heavy diet, I will put the raw vegetables as a salads. I can choose on cauliflower, broccoli, or, or cabbage. And then I just put one, uh, it can be one piece of cassava or one piece of Irish potato or one piece of arrowroot uh, just to help the person be able to, uh, to eat the food well. But if uh, another alternative that I can use is making a salad of spring, uh, spring beans and some carrots and some uh, uh, onions and uh, maybe some broccoli or cauliflower. That salad, that is a very complete salad. And then you put some almond, just nut by this. Side. Just a piece, a handful, about uh, ten or ten to fifteen uh, almonds, and then the person take that. And then at uh, at lunch time, I want to give salads, fruit salads that are easy to digest. For example, I can give pepino melon, or thorn melons, or uh, um, amla, cucumber. Those are fruits that are not having a lot of, uh, they're not having, they do not increase the glycemic index. And some few apples also, you don't use any fruit that is sweet. That is for someone who is having high, high blood sugars. And then if the patient is threatening to be very weak, I'll give potassium broth. In the potassium broth, you make using carrots, one cup of carrot, and uh, about one cup of any vegetable. You can choose a uh, vegetable like uh, uh, celery or, or vegetable like um, cabbage, one cup, and then about two bars of garlic, and then one cup of Irish potato, you boil them together. And then the pass, uh, you boil them, you simmer them under low heat. And then for about 30 minutes, you blend and then you give the patient a, a cup when they are threatening to be very weak. Now that will increase the blood sugars a little bit, just maybe by two units, but it helps you to control and regulate the blood sugars. So make sure that that plate is monitored very, very well, the first three days. And then once after three days, you see the blood sugars have gone extremely low. When they are about uh, uh, now reading between eight and nine or between eight to 10, you should now be beginning to strengthen and, and uh, making sure that it is maintained or a little bit lowered. Um, so that the patient will not go on a coma because of low blood sugar. And after the third day, if you see the blood sugars are always very low, maybe reading five or four, don't, don't allow the patient to go to sleep when the blood sugars are four, below four. You can give a fruit juice or give a power porridge. A power porridge, uh, uh, I'm going to discuss it uh, in my, uh, in, in some of the 
flies here. That power porridge or sweet fruit juice help to elevate the blood sugar a little bit so that the person when it's going to sleep, sleeps when the blood sugars are a little bit high. Don't make the patient go to sleep when the blood sugar is below four. He may die in the morning. Now let's look now for some herbs you will use in your program to make sure that uh, uh, you reduce that blood sugar very fast. We have cinnamon, insulin plant. This is a plant that is majorly, you take the juice of insulin plant for 30 days and your blood sugars are almost normalized or even you'll, you'll find the diabetes, uh, the, the, the high blood sugars are already to the normal levels. Uh, so insulin plant is a very good plant that we need to research and find and plant in our, our homes. We have licorice root and golden seed. We have the cedar berries or cypress seeds, uh, stevia, fig leaves, alfalfa, guava leaves, nettles, dandelion roots, burdock, wild sunflower leaves. Then we have the thylosema, we have the albizia, Jerusalem artichoke, cactus, juice, lemongrass roots and leaves. Um, personally, what um, I sometimes in my diabetic formula, which has always worked uh, for any patient that, that takes it, for about 10 days, the blood sugars, the cholesterol levels will almost be normal with the right diet, exercise, and drinking a lot of water and enough sleep. Uh, this is the formula that I use. I put cinnamon, one part of cinnamon, one part of licorice root, one part of golden seed, one part of, uh, of uh, stinging nettle, one part of dandelion root, and one part of Tylosema and one part of uh, albizia and, and about uh, two parts of cloves. Any patient that I give this formula, when I have already mixed them together and put a tablespoon, one tablespoon uh, in a glass of hot water, you steep it for 20 minutes, and the patient drink this for uh, three times a day for 10 days, the blood sugars are always reading between eight and nine, which so ever level it may have been. It has always worked for me perfectly. So depending on, on, the, on, on, the, on, the, on these herbs you can get, you can put them alongside the nutritional supports, the foods that had discussed above, to help you uh, regulate or normalize the blood sugars. Now, another thing you have to know, there are some people who are in a place where they can just get guava leaves. Guava leaves are known to reduce the blood sugars. What it does is that it uh, normalizes the glycolysis process, the process by which the, the carbohydrates or uh, uh, the starches are converted into simple sugars. So guava leaves is very, very effective for that. Uh, and fig leaves is also one that is very powerful. The fig leaves, the fig leaves are uh, helpful in breaking down, breaking down the, uh, breaking down the, uh, the, the sugars in your system as another, uh, in another way they help the insulin to get into the, uh, into the blood because the fig leaves have inulin that is a precursor to insulin. You just juice them or you can boil them and then take. If you can take a, uh, about three to four cups a day of, of fig leaves, you are able to control your blood sugars. Another thing that the fig leaves help in is that it adds bulk to the uh, uh, to the food you eat, and 
it binds the cholesterol levels. So uh, you need to, to know how to, to use them. And in your herbal formula, make sure that you have those herbs that regulate the blood sugar so that they don't go very low. If you can get all these herbs and you mix them together, I tell you within three days, the blood sugars will be very, very low, below 10. But you don't want uh, after three days, you go for another three days, it will be around seven, six. And then the last two days, seven to 10 days, it will be reading oscillating between five to six. Don't allow it to go below four. So what helps you is the licorice root, the alfalfa, and uh, another thing that I've not included here is, um, is ginseng. Ginseng, licorice root, and uh, alfalfa helps to maintain that blood sugar at the normal level. So it cannot go below, uh, below five. It cannot, uh, uh, it cannot go above the, uh, the, the uh, abnormal levels, maybe be, uh, above 12, because you know, above 12, the person will be uh, having pre-diabetic, uh, pre-diabetic, uh, condition. So you must know how to balance this half. Don't just concentrate on lowering, lowering until the body is not able to, uh, to maintain itself. Now in this herbal formula, I have, food, I have the, the herbs that are going to restore the kidney, the, not the kidney, the liver and the pancreas. That is golden seal and the cedar berries. And if you have insulin, Plant. If you don't have insulin plant, we have a plant called oxalis. Oxalis is a very good plant for restoring your, uh, your pancreas. Another one is, uh, is tamarind. Tamarind tea will restore your pancreas, however, however devastated it has, uh, uh, the, 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 the disease has gone. And another thing is wild sunflower. I have a testimony of a friend who used wild sunflower alone. That is tithonia. Uh, she could juice the tithonia, about 10 leaves in a cup of water and take when she feels that the blood sugars are high. And I tell you within, within three months, the blood sugars are always at the normal level. She never feels any any crisis of, of sugar, just wild sunflower alone with the diet and exercise and water. So I came to realize that wild sunflower is very beneficial for, for fighting diabetes. Wild sunflower, purple leaves, very effective for controlling your, uh, your, uh, your blood sugars because they lower the ATP process and uh, the glycolysis process so that uh, the, the, the sugar is not, uh, you don't, you will not have a lot of sugar in your blood. So that is the experience I've been, I've been having uh, with this, uh, have this, the cedar berries or cypress seeds, um, the wild sunflower used singly to help, the, the guava leaves used also singly, the fig leaves has always benefited those patients that are I have been, uh, have been helping. So uh, it depends with the condition or the type of, uh, the, the type of uh, diabetes you are dealing with. If it is diabetes type one, this herb still can help you. But with the type one, I have two herbs that are very, very helpful. Fig leaves and uh, stinging nettle. Fig leaves and stinging nettle helps the people who are having a problem with their, uh, 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 that the pancreas that cannot produce insulin or even glucagon, fig leaves and stinging nettle. Those are the experiences I've had with uh, people with diabetes. Now, uh, the next thing I want to, to talk about is the food to choose when making a diabetic meal plan. 
uh, you need to choose on these fruits, on these vegetables, and these grains, fats, and oils, so that that plate of a diabetic is always balanced to help with controlling the blood sugars. And another thing is knowing the uh, the mineral interrelationship because we want to restore the the pancreas, and these are the main uh, main. was very poor. Okay, okay. so uh, we were talking about uh, about the minerals that helps your 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 panic and uh, chromium. So if you are having someone who is uh, affected with diabetes. You must make sure that uh, uh, you must make sure that those food stuffs are the food stuff that help to to restore the pancreas is uh, is uh, um, actually made available. For instance, you must make sure that there is zinc. You must make sure that there is vanadium. There must be chromium. And uh, the foods that we uh, that we can use for that are always available and always ready. For example, uh, food sources that are rich in chromium, apples, uh, the brown rice, onions, dried beans, broccoli, barley, corn, nuts. Uh, so in when you're going to cho don't choose those that are having high sugar levels. In your diabetic plate, make sure that the foods that are used are low in glycemic index to help you in lowering that blood sugar as fast as possible. And then uh, you can choose to use, uh, you can choose to use um, minerals supplements like zinc, use about 60 grams of zinc uh, uh, twice per day. Vitamin C, you'll have to take about um, 5,000 units of vitamin C. Uh, you'll have also to take calcium supplements about 300 uh, grams uh, twice a day. And uh, you have to take B complex about uh, also about 500 units a day, three times a day. And that is going to, to help to restore the pancreas. And uh, in case uh, someone is uh, not able to, is not able to, to get a lot of that green leafy vegetables, you can go on, uh, on, uh, on grass juices, from kuch grass to rice grass, rice grass to barley grass to oats grass. Uh, any grass juice that you take help your pancreas to develop and to restore. So this is the experience I've had with the, with the diabetic patients. And uh, some of the times, for example, if the diabetic patient is going, uh, is having the sugar crisis, it means the sugar levels are so high is about to fall to go on a coma. What you need to do is to do a garlic enema, or or make a may, may make strong decoction or concussion of of garlic. Take about two bars of garlic, put in a glass of warm water, juice it, and then give the person to drink. Or if you have a tincture of um, of uh, they say lobelia, you put under the tongue and the blood sugars will squeeze low, will go low very, very fast. And uh, um, if the patient is having low, very low blood sugars, because we have those who are very weak at having low blood sugar. And uh, these are people who can go, who can experience a problem with uh, fatigue syndrome, give them ginseng, 
give them golden seal, give them a herb that is called uh, uh, Dongwai or Badok. If you have that mixture and you give to someone who is having very low blood sugars, the blood sugars will be, uh, will be raised up. And they should be taking, the people with low blood sugar should be taking things like stevia, honey, or glucose, just to make sure that the blood sugars are, are, are increased. But above all, we need to follow the laws of health. Exercise is very helpful for someone having diabetes. In fact, exercise can help to control high blood sugars. If you feel like the blood sugars are high, get some, uh, some hole, dig, or get a slasher slash, or if you can swim, swim. If you can run, run to help you, to help the sugar to be, uh, the muscles to, uh, to assimilate more sugar. So this, the, 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 the sugars within the muscles to be used up. Exercise and drinking a lot of water and eating a balanced diet and proper rest are known to be the best cure So any remedy. So I want to stop here and uh, give any one of us, if you have a question, but you can ask it after the prayer. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this time and study and understand uh, how to deal with diabetes. May you continue to help us that we can be a good influence to those who are suffering outside and let your will be done in our lives always for this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.